Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you how I edit this picture, one of my portrait shots from start to finish. So this is the starting point. I'm gonna talk you through the artistic idea and also the decisions on the editing. Let's get started with that. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So I'm super extra happy on how supportive everybody has been about my last videos where I explained the artistic thoughts behind that, how I analyze a picture, also how I prepare for shots, explaining how I use the camera and how I edit it afterwards. And here we're going to talk about an artistic work of mine. And this is Lisa. She's a young actress, really also amazing as a model. I just wanted to have her face surrounded by that really simple setup. I didn't even have a studio light. I used one of these little pocket lights here you can use and then a softbox for a flash that I strapped this thing into without that by the way just the white light and then just moving it around with my hand to find some nice dramatic light and i wanted her to have her face surrounded by flowers but then also her black long hair coming through these flowers to the front to have this kind of mystical character to have a little bit of this kind of traditional folky subculture expression in it too and then we are going to add more hair to that because you you know I love this feeling of larger than life. By the way, the first thing I'm seeing here is that the eyes are not on a line. So what are we going to do here first is going to rotate this here a little bit to the side because this of course has to be very straight. Okay, and then we are going to recrop this. Here we have these third lines. One is on the eyebrows, one is on the lips. May lower this a little bit so the middle part of the face is in the middle. And I want this to have be very stable, be very powerful, be very expressive. So this is why the face has to be straight and dead center. And then for extra hair, I simply photographed her from the back. The reason for that is because I want the viewer to be sucked into the picture towards her face, not paying too much attention to the outside, at the same time having a very dramatic, powerful outside with these mountains of hairs around her. So this is going to be amazing so let's make a selection here just like that boom there we have it on an extra layer we can delete the other layer and you are already feeling that i'm very excited here <laughs> i think i need to calm myself a little bit down okay this took too much from the selection let's reduce this a little bit and like i said the selection right now doesn't have to be super exact because i'm going to refine it later anyways we're gonna also use these hairs over here the natural hairs we can leave that in i think that looks good yes thank you very much okay so we have made the selection with our selection brush you can see that is super easy and simple. And then simply down here, I click on mask layer. Now that we have this, I will move this out here. So I separate the mask from the background and then I press control G on my keyboard to put the mask into a group. And then also I'm going to put the hair into that same group. So now control D to deselect. And now we can move the hair around and it will stay inside of the mask as you can see here. Beautiful, good start, right? Okay, to give me a better idea of what is happening here, I will then go to adjustment here and select brightness contrast. I will adjust this a little bit and then refine the adjustments later. This is just to give me a better idea of what is going on. Let's make the hair here a little bit darker. All right, so this is non-destructive as you can imagine because it's an adjustment layer. And then you can see here, I can bring the hair into position and then I'm going to bend it similar to this. So down here, I click on the mesh warp tool and then simply let's bring this up here. I want this to be uh, along this line that we are already seeing from the natural hair. You see how this hair is flowing beautifully downwards. I want to have the same thing. Just want to copy that and then we can extend that to the side. So we have magically flowing hair there. And yeah, this is this is how art is done. Well, at least how my art is done. You can, of course, do your own stuff, which is super important. Follow your own expressions, emotions, artistic needs and visions. Everybody has 
his or her own style. Okay, so now we can move this up here and then we have this and look how good that is. Look how perfect that fits. And now we're just going to move this up here like so and then again up here like so. Let's see, this should be awesome. I think this is going to be very, very nice. Okay, cool. I'm already pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Of course, now we need to blur these lines here because there we see some stuff that's not so good. So hardness zero on our eraser tool here. Let's go like this. That's better. That's very nice. Okay, cool. Let's do the same thing up here. Where is actually the edge? I think this is the edge here. That's already pretty cool. Very nice. Wow, look at that. Oh, there's some stuff sticking out down here. That's not ideal. Let's bring this over a little bit. Maybe we can stretch this a little bit bigger, like so. For the face, you can see, look at that beautiful quality from that lens. Wow, I love it. That's a Sigma art lens, 14 to 24 millimeters. And I don't want to fix this 100%, just these little bit pimples here, but the face should stay mostly natural and mostly unrefined. So we have a more earthy um, expression on that face. That's important to me. Now let me do a copy here of that layer. And then we could work with frequency separation in that case. Let's zoom in here and let me see these um, pimples here a little bit to get them in here. That looks good. So we have this and you can see here in the frequency separation, we now basically only have this gray part. And with that, I can simply basically keep the texture of the skin and then simply um, paint over that. See here the texture is blurred and we are also coping over the blur from an area that is equally strong blur. That is a very important part here. Don't copy over a textured sharp part of the skin onto something that is not a sharp part of the skin because then it's not going to look good. I think that's already good enough. We do have a little hair down here. I don't think I will remove these because I want this to be a little bit more earthy. I'm going to use a depth of field um, layer here, like so, with a radius. And you can see here, what I want to do is to have this face in focus, and then I want to have the rest not in focus. So let's make this bigger and then bring this inner part here back, like this. Have the oval on the face like so. And then we have an increasingly strong blur towards the outside where we have these hair elements. Put in some more vibrance. Clarity, less clarity. Okay, let's go like this. And this down here is also still very bright. So we have to blend this area. I think this is still the mask. So we have to adjust that too. Hmm. Have to bring down the brush again. Yes. Okay. So this is flowing a little bit into that area. That's already good. And then what I want to do is to also darken this area down here a little bit because that is too bright. Maybe also over here a little bit. So now we're going to open this in Viveza. I have to go here and merge visible. So we have an extra layer of everything. Okay, let's go here to Viveza 3. And now starts the process where we are going to adjust this image to bring out the interesting elements about it. Now I want to add some more points. First of all, up here in that shadow area we have here on the face. Um, give me more brightness in that area here. And then I want to also put this on other areas in the face. I want to see a lot of the face, but at the same time, I don't want to lose the dramatic shadows. 
that we have in the face. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. And then what I also want to have here is control points here in the whites of the eye, like so. Give me a preview of that. Um, that looks already pretty good. Let me see, let's bring this down a little bit more. And then let me zoom in here a little bit, bringing up here the highlights, because I only wanna have it in this area. And then I'm also gonna bring this over here and I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to bring this over here. And so now you can see we have these nice lights. Maybe also have this on these highlights of the eyes so they shine a little bit more. I want to readjust some things. So first of all, I want this to be darker because that is grabbing a little bit too much attention now. And then let's have a look here. Make this a little bit smaller here so it doesn't attach to the light of the nose too much. That is very nice. Okay, so now that we're done with the editing, what I want to do is now the color adjustment. So for that, what I'm going to use is HSL. And here we have some very important values. First of all, we have the red that we find up here in our flowers but you can see here that these handles they go into the orange area i don't want that because orange is the skin tone right so in all kind of skin tones orange is an important part so i want to move these out of the way so they are only touching this lightly and then we are going to do a little bit of hue shift let's see to maybe like this let's see if we want to desaturate that a little bit because it makes it a little bit more dramatic. So that is already pretty cool. Then we can see here on these tips of the petals, sometimes we have a little bit of pink in here and we want to adjust this. You can see if I move this around, you get a different kind of pink tone. So I want to move this similar to the red we already have up here in the hair so we don't end up with some extra tones. And then also I want to desaturate that maybe even reduce the brightness a little bit so these tones are coming closer together. Now here we have yellow. We want to switch this over to orange. You can see when I click on here in the skin tone, skin is actually in that orange area. Now I want to orient this over a little bit more into that area here so we are just capturing that kind of orangey value here and we can play around with this just a little bit. Let's see, maybe like this, giving it a little bit more saturation. Maybe also, let's see if we make this a little bit darker. You see, you can also do some crazy stuff here. I don't want to do that. Um, let's go like this, that's okay. Then we have some blue tones. You find them here in the shadow. Again, we can pick them like so, and then we can adjust this a little bit, like for example, so. That looks pretty cool, desaturated a little bit. Uh, make it a little bit brighter and that already looks pretty cool. Now let's go for some split toning here because I want to have our shadow values a little bit different. So here we go, shadow values blue, shadow saturation like this. And that, well, let's see. Bring this down a little bit and then readjust this a little bit, just to have a little bit of a contrasting blue tone against the red tone we find here. And then we can maybe have a little bit more of an orange tone here, a warmer tone. You can see this will warm up our face because the face is more in the highlight area. And like that, we have a nice contrasting subtle element between the strong red in the flowers and then the blue in the shadow. So that's pretty cool. I wanna go in here again to the red, maybe desaturate that a little bit more. I feel like that's a bit too extreme. Or maybe for Instagram, you want to have a little bit more of that color. Let's see, like so, that is good. Now that we are almost done, I copied over again two of these hair patches that we created and also brought over the mask. And I will put this on again into the picture because I wanna have just a little bit more hair structure here. So let's also move this up here like that. And then I will individually adjust these. Let's see, bring in some curves here on this one like so. 
Is that the right one? This is the one down here, that's okay. Let's have some contrast on this, like that. Because I just feel like I want to have some more structure in this, right? So this is a last adjustment and it's always good to be open to refine your work, readjust it in a way that makes you happy where you find the result that you're looking for. And here, I just want to have a little bit more detail because I feel like these strong structures, they are taking away a little bit too much of that amazing expression of the hair surrounding her head. So I want to have some more structure here. You can see up here, this needs to be darker. Can't be that bright. So let's bring this down a lot more. So it's actually barely visible up here. Also on the other side, I want to do the same thing. Bring this up and then have this very reduced from the brightness like so. And it's just very important to me that this has this larger than life character. And then over here, we have these other parts. There we go. Let's duplicate this too. Move this part over here. And I just want to have this kind of extra structure in here. I just feel like that gives it so much more aura to have that. For some reason, the split toning is not grabbing this part too much, which is interesting. Maybe we have to readjust this, bring this in here to into the group. That already looks a little bit better. And then let's see, shadow lights. No, we don't want to adjust that. Mm. That's good, okay. And then I want to also give me some um, brush here to go around here on these edges and make them a little bit darker, like so. So they stand in front of the hair here, you see? So there isn't kind of a problem with where this is moving. So let's bring back the vignette. Bring the vignette up here, I think. Scale that up. That is it, my friends. I absolutely enjoyed that. Leave a like because that helps my channel so much. Bye.